Recently, I was playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy and found myself relishing my time exploring this jungle environment. Like I was really, actually exploring. I was given a map, key objectives to head towards, extra challenges and secrets hidden throughout the open area to find. I'm taking you with me. Encounters with patrolling enemies to fight in, getting to take in the land as I ventured across it in different directions. Loving this open segment so much, and what has so far been the pretty linear Uncharted series, I began thinking about Naughty Dog, the studio behind these games, and their on and off relationship with non-linear game flow so far. So today, I want to take a look back at their previous action-adventure titles and see how we got here. Naughty Dog's first huge mainstream hit was the 3D platformer Crash Bandicoot, and what we got in this game was a very straightforward map screen that allowed you to select levels one after the other. The levels themselves were usually single path point A to point B affairs. This map stage select setup is in line with something like Super Mario Bros. 3, where completion of one level unlocks another. Only in that game, sometimes you get a choice between a couple of levels and would only have to complete one of them to progress further. This would have been something easy to implement in Crash, but I can see why it wasn't. Mario Mario 3 has upwards of 70 plus individual levels, while Crash has around 30. By forcing you to see them all outside of like two secret ones to complete the game, the title maximizes its length. So how to go about adding a bit more choice into progression while subjecting the player to most of the levels? Well, the answer turned out to be easy. Both Crash 2 and Crash 3 added the warp rooms. Complete five levels in any order you want to access another five levels and so on. A simple way to give the player a bit more freedom of choice. The current five stages can have a relatively similar level of difficulty and then you can up that a bit with the next five levels. Naughty Dog would take player progression choice as far as they ever would though in their next game, Jack and Daxter. This time they adopted the open level collectathon style brought to prominence by Mario 64 and implemented further in games like Banjo Kazooie and Spyro the Dragon. Jack and Daxter is a technically impressive marvel, a smooth running 60 FPS game that has an open world with no loading times, where you can go from the first room of the game all the way to the final boss without ever being interrupted. Jack adopts a typical collectathon formula explore some open stages, collect X amount of important items items and then you open up another set of levels. In this case, you're primarily after the power cells. Strewn throughout each area, they can be found lying around by completing objectives or by collecting other items that you can trade in for one. There are 101 in the game, but you only need 72 to reach the last stage, meaning unlike the Crash games, here Naughty Dog is comfortable with the possibility that you may miss entire levels. Don't want to get a certain power cell? Don't like the activity you're doing? Don't do it. Outside of the final area and the segments that connect hub zones, there are very few tasks in the game that are required to beat it. What works so well on top of that is that Jack and Daxter is a very dense game. There's very little downtime when traversing the world. There isn't huge gaps of nothing between optional routes. You'll be punching, jumping, and rolling wherever you go. You could retool all of the content in Jack and Daxter into one long linear path, and it would still be a fun, challenging platformer. The freedom you get added on top of that is just the icing on the cake. Obviously, I'm a super genius and already knew all this for years, but I did watch Nova Canoe's video on Jack where he brought up a similar point. So I'm I'm gonna give that vid a nod here so he doesn't come looking for me, because I mean, he tells me he's pretty ripped. But yeah, Jack can get away with this non-linearity since it doesn't have any kind of intricately woven story or character development it needs to make sure you complete in a determined order. That changed though in the sequel. Jack 2 focuses far more on developing the story and characters in the world, so to make coherent sense, it can't just let you do all of its 60 plus missions in any order. The missions available will appear on your mini-map, and those are the ones you can do at that given part of the game. Sometimes you'll be able to pick between a few different missions and continue the story down a different branch by unlocking another mission after the one you picked, albeit ultimately only until the completion of a cluster of missions bottlenecks you into some important events, after which the game might branch off again. This obviously allows Naughty Dog to tailor the pacing of the game by forcing you into a linear succession of missions when they want to ramp up the tension and focus the game in on one plot thread. Jack 2 does contain optional bonus missions you can do in between story ones, but the reward is usually orbs that can only be spent on cheats that start out merely cosmetic and then alternate to game breaking once you get an amount you'll probably only have after beating the title. In fact, I'm pretty sure they lock the really juicy stuff like unlimited ammo away until you beat the final boss. Feel free to complete the game again for me to confirm that. Jack 2 usually lets you quit out of a mission to try a different path or take part in these side challenges, which is appreciated, but the actual impact completing them will have on helping you beat the game 
game is very little. There are a couple of moves that can be unlocked with a gem certain enemies drop, but the game is practically designed so you can't get a good amount outside of the main missions anyway. This is in sharp contrast to Jack 1, even if you aren't collecting power cells in the levels and are just finding orbs, those orbs can be traded in for cells. So no matter what you choose to do in Jack 1, it's moving you towards the end game. In Jack 2, outside of completing the 1-3 to three story missions you'll probably have available at one time, the rest doesn't really aid you in that. Jack 3 does a little to remedy this. Here, optional missions will in fact allow you to upgrade Jack's moves and powers directly upon completion. So there is a reason to go off and do them that ties into building a more powerful character and beating the game. The only problem is Jack 3 is way easier than Jack 2, providing you a truckload more moves along the critical path anyway, so the benefit of these optional upgrades is negligible. Plus, unlike Jack 2, weirdly Jack 3 has way more missions you can't quit out on. So even though there is a benefit now to doing some side ops for upgrades, you likely won't be able to escape a lot of missions to get to them. It's at this point we move into Naughty Dog's next big action-adventure series, Uncharted, where a big shift occurs. The first Uncharted is a rather short, very linear game. You enter a confined area, complete a task, whether it be shooting bad guys or climbing or solving a simple puzzle, and then you move on to the next. If you look in some bushes now and again, you may find a collectible, but its acquisition has pretty much no impact on the gameplay. You can carry only two guns at once and some grenades. The gameplay is about managing those few tools and then picking up new ones in the heat of battle to stay alive when their ammo is depleted. So there aren't any collectibles with long-term impact on your character's growth. You won't hang on to any weapon for long. Uncharted is quite a fun game, but it's a pretty short, linear one. Jack 1 had an impressive graphical leap from the Crash games and was a 60fps, smooth-running, no-loading-time open-world title. Uncharted, though, while there's a leap in detail and I can appreciate Naughty Dog's continued commitment to keep loading screens out of their adventure games, is now a title that runs at 30 FPS with heavy motion blur set on a linear path you'll be done with in 7 or 8 hours. And I wonder why we had to be subjected to this change in scope. Well, one thing that forces Uncharted down this road is once again a more involved storyline than Crash and Jack 1. Events that have to take place in a certain order and not just the ending and the beginning and a couple of bits in between. Jack 1 had a few mandatory scenes that could bottleneck you into in between hubs, for example. The Jack sequels had more intricate stories than that, more intricate stories than Uncharted, I'd say, but those games benefited from a large cast. So they could afford to put some forks in the road where you could follow one plot thread involving one character for a few missions before returning to another's. Go do crew's dirty work for a while, or head to the underground for some rebellion antics. Uncharted has like five characters, so that wasn't as much an option here. So yeah, at the end of the day, I think the structure of Uncharted is the one that restricts design the most out of all these games. If if you screw up designing a gameplay scenario or idea in Uncharted, there's a higher chance the player might get annoyed and quit because they have to do it. Now. The developers have to refine everything, and perhaps there's not as much room to experiment. At least the player can maybe take a break from an objective and play around somewhere else in a game like Jack 2. This is also the case in the Crash Bandicoot sequels, and of course overwhelmingly the case in Jack 1. The developers can experiment loads because there's hardly a single mission or objective the player has to complete in that game. Another benefit of the open design. I mean, there's a reason why one of the most infamous parts in Jack 2 is where you're tricked into an ambush you can't quit out of that also so happens to be one of the hardest missions in the game. Uncharted is kind of a return to the Crash 1 setup in a sense, a series of linear levels where you can return to previous ones to get optional collectibles. Although instead of picking from a level select, you have to return to the main menu and hit up this list to replay previous stages. How much cooler would it have been though if you opened this and it took you to a 3D map of some islands, Crash 1 style, with a tiny Nathan Drake running around? Someone should totally make that. Unlike like Crash Bandicoot though, here you can't really go back and improve your chances of beating a current level by, say, getting extra lives. You can collect treasures you may have missed, which give you reward points to unlock the usual fun visual effects and behind-the-scenes movies. To get these bonus unlocks, you can also do a variety of skill-based achievements during gameplay, which might give you an incentive to find a good area to go back to to complete them in. But again, none of this will give you a better chance of beating a part you're stuck on. Really, when it comes down to it in Uncharted, your only way of advancing is to complete the one thing you're currently doing. I mean, aside from unlocking the speed up function, I guess that will kind of objectively make you beat the game faster. Uncharted 2 has a similar setup in terms of gameplay structure and unlocks. Uncharted 3 is still using that linear world design, except it chucks the reward system out the window for the single player and just makes your reward for getting treasures and earning feats of skill and gameplay be a trophy. 
So nothing. Even after you beat the game, there's nothing in this bonus menu, there's nothing here. Making Uncharted 3, I guess, the most linear Naughty Dog game by any metric. When Naughty Dog made The Last of Us, they implemented the same structure as Uncharted, but were a tiny bit less restrictive with it. Environments were still linear, but a little larger. There was a little more room to move about and collect items. One of the more memorable moments featured a suburban block of houses you could take a break in and explore a little while listening to the NPCs you had with you. And in Uncharted 4, we finally got a few pretty large open locations, with nothing mandatory to complete in them off the beaten track, but where before continuing down the main story path, you could freely roam around to find hidden collectibles and hey, even occasionally the odd disposable yet slightly more special gun. Of course, unlike a survival game like Last of Us, these collectibles won't affect your gameplay much in pursuit of the ending. You might find a slightly better temporary gun or a shiny object that goes into your inventory, but it's a nice distraction for sure now that the areas feel big enough to be rewarding to explore. It breathes more life into these worlds. And that's where we come full circle back to the latest Naughty Dog game, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy includes a chapter where you're given a map of a large open world jungle. You have three main objectives to go to, which kind of funnel you into their own more self-contained sort of mission. Once all three are completed, you'll unlock the path that continues the game. As you go through this jungle though, you will also come across smaller challenges that when overcome will offer up a collectible, that can then be traded in at another optional location for a special prize. This is a lot of fun, probably some of the most fun I've had playing Uncharted, and that's not just because it's non-linear. The combat and world traversal is also of course at its highest level of refinement for the series. But this added touch of exploration was really getting me into the treasure hunting mood the franchise has always been gunning for, but never quite nailing for me. This setup reminds me of the Jack sequels, in which, hey, you have three missions on the map, go and do them in any order you want to unlock the next big event. How then do they get around the issue of having only two characters around, developing one plot thread over the course of a string of non-linear events? As I said before, Jack 2 and 3 can get away with letting you choose which mission to do at times by having each one deal with a different character and location. I guess the answer is simple now, just have the conversations play out in the same order no matter what. Have the same dialogue take place wherever the player decides to go. Our pro tags will always bring up this conversation about the Drake brothers, for example, first at no matter which objective you choose to go to. What you should know. Heard you and those Drake brothers are close. And the first one you decide to visit will also show this scene of them being more surprised by activating this water contraption, while the subsequent two will show them being more used to it. This revolving circle puzzle that gets repeated three times also ramps up in difficulty in accordance with which order you choose to take on each key objective. These tricks allow this segment to fall more in line with the Jack sequel structure of picking between a bunch of missions. Of course, the Jack sequel's attempts to convey realistically sized cities and Lost Legacy's endeavor to offer us a huge jungle and make it all feel tangible, in both cases ends up making the game feel padded by a bunch of pretty non-challenging, repetitive driving. Remember what I said about Jack 1 being dense? You're always jumping around from place to place, the core gameplay is the spotlight. You don't drive to cross empty areas, you drive in very specific levels and challenges built around the driving. That's because while Jack 1 gives you the illusion of being a huge world, everything is pretty close together and there's less downtime because of it. These other games want to give you that sense of scope, making their worlds appear big not just by showing them looking large, but by making them feel large. And jumping and shooting your way across these big areas would take a long time, require loads of extra work to make paths that extend this long, and ultimately for the player might just end up being a chore to redo on this kind of scale. Do you feel what I'm getting at here? Designing levels as big as the cities in Jack 2 and 3, and the jungle in Lost Legacy, and making it all be considered platforming shooting content would be pretty much impossible. So driving's just gotta kind of be here. But what if, instead of trying to convey a huge world, Uncharted The Lost Legacy did give you a smaller yet non-linear open area to explore? Open enough to make you feel like you're exploring and coming across new things, but not large enough to make you drive through huge portions of it. There is something charming about having your own vehicle and driving around between objectives, but the Jack 1 tight, dense structure is the one that lets the core gameplay dominate. And I think Uncharted swinging and shooting, its core gameplay, has probably reached the point in Lost Legacy where it could get away with being the primary focus for long stretches of open area exploring. 
Realism also holds back Lost Legacy in another way. The game, of course, probably should entice you with a reward for doing all those optional objectives on the map, and it does, with a skip to the time if you don't want to know, a beeper amulet that gives off a warning when you're near treasures. At least cheats and unlockables returned for the PS4 Uncharted, so unlike in the third game, trinkets are now somewhat worth collecting again. I know it's probably a stretch to call Uncharted realistic, but it's definitely one of the most grounded Naughty Dog worlds. Which means it can get away with less than, say, a fantasy universe like Jack, where there would be no questions asked if you found, say, a sick ancient mystical gun weapon or magic power on an optional route. Uncharted has to go with you collecting something more mundane that can be contextualized better in the more grounded nature of its world. But it also kind of has to do that because, again, the gameplay is about quick resourcefulness with a small temporary depleting set of weapons. And the platforming challenges are so choreographed and restrictive that any sort of added movement ability or power-up would likely break them as they are now. There really isn't room as the game stands to give you any sort of permanent cool optional upgrades. But perhaps in another series, this more open level design could be included, and with more tangible rewards. Last of Us Part 2 is on the way, and as a survival game where you're constantly collecting permanent fixtures to add to your inventory, this style could be even more fully explored. Let's say there's a similar section in an upcoming Last of Us game where you have a Mad Max style car, or maybe just a horse, and you have an open area to explore. Maybe you have none of that, maybe you're just on foot looking around. Completing optional objectives in that area could net you valuable long-term resources, and big scavenger hunts could allow you to come across some mad powerful weapon left behind in the urban wreckage years ago. There's a lot of opportunities there. Once Lost Legacy ends this section, though, it returns to the linear style of previous Uncharted games for the most part. But I can see the appeal of trying to give you a game with the best of both worlds. Linear, carefully constructed set-piece-like routes intercut with more exploratory locations. That, in and of itself, isn't too dissimilar to the Jack 2 and 3 design, where you'd open up a little flowchart of events for a while, but then get a linear succession of missions when the plot necessitated it. I could also see the Uncharted games adopting a Crash 2 and 3 warp room style approach. Fly to this part of the world, to get one clue or go to another, you just might have to do both to continue the story proper. Non-linearity doesn't make a game good, necessarily. But as I was saying before with Jack 1, that approach of including optional content in an action-adventure game inherently allows for more experimentation and risk-taking on the part of the design. The Uncharted games on PS3 were impressive spectacles at times, no small feat to put together, but I wouldn't call them risky games, in terms of ideas at least. Lost Legacy got to mess around a bit as a smaller spin-off, and within that open-world level it added, it got to try new things the Uncharted's haven't played around with much before. Maybe there's not any truly crazy side quests or anything at this stage, but enough to where I'm thinking, yeah, do more of this. Take this further and make a game where I'm stumbling across some truly mad shit in optional paths. Paths you don't have to curtail to the mainstream consumer market that doesn't want to do anything too crazy to see those credits. But that also rewards the more adventurous player in a legitimate way when they return to the main objective. In something like a pure action game where the core mechanics have mountains of depth, where the protagonist is just barreling towards kicking someone's ass, I can dig linearity, but for games about uncovering hidden relics and gazing upon impressive landscapes, in Uncharted, this was a welcome change of pace. You've taken us by the hand and shown us a lot of pretty visuals for the last decade now, Naughty Dog. This level of glamorous spectacle has already solidified you as an industry giant in the minds of newer players. They're probably going to buy your games now no matter what. You've done it. You've got the laurels. You've hooked them in. So I think there's no better time than now for you to let go of that hand for a bit to let us stumble into trouble on our own terms again. Let's go topside and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Thanks for watching. This video is part of a Patreon backed show. The names scrolling across the screen now are my lovely top backers. If you like what you've seen and want to see more, more frequently, please consider backing over at patreon.com slash thegamingbritshow. Peace out. Just bring back Jack. That's all. That's this video, basically. Just, just you know, just, just bring him back. Just do it. You tried once. It looked a bit dodgy. Try again. You know. Come on. Come on, guys.